It is so glad to have you with us this morning as we celebrate the second Sunday in Advent. Again, you'll notice um, we're not in the sanctuary. I'm in my backyard. This is um, just out the corner of our house there. And uh, welcome. The reason we're here is, uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, I have been potentially exposed to the COVID virus. We're uh, pretty sure it's not going to go anywhere, but we're taking all precautions and um, with testing and awaiting those results, we'll, we'll uh, keep you posted. But for safety's sake, uh, we are not going to gather in the sanctuary. Um, I'm home doing uh, some self-quarantining and um, here we are. Uh, the world has found us even in our church and in our life here. But that doesn't stop us from doing worship. Uh, we've discovered some new technologies and uh, capacities and abilities in our staff and in um, what we have available to us. So we're going to uh, piece together the, the worship today uh, electronically. And I'll be here. There'll be folks in the, in the sanctuary. There's uh, folks at home. And we begin with that folks at home. Uh, it is the Perez family. Most of you know Nancy and Aaron uh, Perez. They are going to help us celebrate the second Sunday of Advent by lighting the second Advent candle. Hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. So we are um, here to light the second candle for Advent. Um, this is the Perez family and um, we hope you find yourself well, healthy, and blessed in the midst of this uncertainty. Now we're going to have the scripture reading with Addy. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, a promised one, once again we come to the season of the Advent filled with the ante anticipation and hope. Give us the patience to seek your presence in every moment. Give us the courage to wait in these uncertain times of pain and separation. Give us the compassion to wait with grace on one another. Give us the strength to wait for the Messiah. Give us the faith to wait for the Savior. Now we're going to have the lighting of the second candle. Now join us for a closing prayer. Dear God, more than anything, give us with your love as we continue to be your people of hope in the world. Amen. 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 Thank you again from the Perez family. You guys take care and have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 Welcome back. Um, it's good to have you here again. Uh, again, we are at, at uh, our home uh, where Betsy and I live and I'm broadcasting from here today. Just a couple of quick announcements uh, among us. Uh, it is a communion Sunday, so it's time to get your uh, elements. I have mine here um, with us. <clears throat> but because it's also the second Sunday in Advent, um, and we've just celebrated a very just beautiful home version of lighting that candle. We're going to make present that same light here by, if the match will stay lit, we will have um, our lights here as well for the second Sunday. And it is also a time to remember to pass the peace of Christ to one another, um, to share the hope and the peace and the love that comes to us from God in Christ. Um, I would invite you to take time to do that either now during the service, or sometime during the service, um, every day to remember there are those who need to be connected with and you are that agent of God's peace. So take time to do that. Announcement wise, we have a couple just real quick ones for you. Uh, the choir. They are going to continue to have their annual choir party and this year they're going to do it virtually and while together they'll celebrate a meal from Chili's. We are invited to share in that meal, maybe not the party part, 
but in that meal um, by, by supporting their fundraiser. There's more information for that on our website um, in the Thursday e-news, but the point is uh, to help just be together in fellowship, if, if not at the party, but certainly with the food that comes. Uh, th please take a moment to think about maybe buying dinner on December 16th from Chili's, and uh, there's a flyer and all that other information available to you, but just keep the choir uh, in your prayers as they keep uh, meeting and doing their fellowship part as well as their music. Um, the second thing is we're going to try something new uh, in the life of the church with regards to how and what we do for worship, and that is to include you. Our first experiment with this is we're looking for photos, JPEGs, uh, things you can send us digitally, uh, that, 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 that sound like, look like, feel like epiphany for you. And the images of epiphany are light. The colors, gold, white, and yellow, um, glory, um, explosion uh, 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 of this glorious light that comes into the world. Um, Epiphany is about discovery and things like that. If you have a photo that, 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 that speaks to you in that way, send it to us. We're going to collect these um, through the month uh, and, and then compile them and then create a space. Uh, by playing that slideshow of photos um, for Michael, our accompanist, to play music that reflects that. Um, we're going to try to do this once a month. We're starting with January 3rd, which is Epiphany Sunday. And so we're asking you to be a part of worship um, as we um, garner those photos of, of, of light and hope and glory. So join the fun, be part of it. Uh, we probably won't give credit for every photo given, but um, you'll know your photo when you see it and we may get too many to use so please know we'll do what, the best we can but we need your help and so we're excited to try something different and new and uh, look for this opportunity every month um, as we create time um, of reflection and it, 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 we're going to center it on prayer and we're going to center it on focus and reflection in, in each of our own journeys um, and give Michael the, the space to play something that speaks to that theme whatever the theme will be so uh, join us, uh, send us your photos, send them to the church office, send them to me. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll use everything we can uh, in this new adventure. With that said, um, let us uh, open with prayer for service this morning. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day that is uh, uh, opening right before us as the sun is rising, as the light comes into the world, as you bring hope with every new day. Guide us in our worship, fill us with this time, um, and bless us as your people in this day. We offer ourselves and our prayers to you, in Jesus' name, amen. And now, um, I invite you to enjoy the singing um, and playing of Benjamin Peck and Michael Munson.
altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the I love that hymn. Uh, it's beautiful. It, I love the words. I love the music, and um, I'm, I'm grateful for the Michael and Benjamin's gift uh, to us all. Sorry, there was something going on there. Um, we're doing something a little bit different this morning with regards to the scripture, and um, the first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 40. Um, and instead of just reading them, I'm just going to tell you about them. The, this is classically known in, in biblical critical study as the beginning of Second Isaiah. It, it brings to a close the, what has gone on before, which was the exile, uh, people separated. And, and these are some of the most uh, powerful words in Scripture. Comfort, comfort my people. And, and it's God speaking a new word to people who have been in exile. It is an opportunity for the people to rehear that their despair, their, their, their separation, uh, um, is no longer uh, the way life will be because God is stepping into that space. They've processed that they, Jerusalem, which has been destroyed, that they, the people of Israel, which has been separated from God, have come um, full circle with their brokenness, and that God is bringing them home. These words of comfort um, resonate with us. I invite you to read them yourselves. Read them in home, read them in a, in a quiet place, and reflect on them as, as we all have need for those words of comfort. And now um, enjoy this um, beautiful piece of music uh, presented this morning by Ruth uh, Weber and her daughter Amelia uh, uh, Lopez Yanez. Thank you. 
welcome back again. Um, I'm kind of curious how this is all going to work, where we're here and there and the pieces are put together. So I, I'm excited for, for what we can do now. Um, but now our second lesson is from the Gospel of Mark, the very beginning of Mark. And um, a lot of folks like Mark and a lot of folks don't like Mark because he's just so abrupt. And here we have the very opening statements of Mark. And it says, in the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And you'd be surprised just how many people have something to say about that. In the beginning of what? I mean, the good news of Jesus, of, uh, of the ongoing story of faith. Because this story doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes out of the history of Israel. And here's the gospel of Mark. It just starts. It just says, boom. God is here. God is doing something. And in the beginning of it all, it's the good news. And that good news is found in Jesus. And the voice of that good news starts with this guy, John. He's out baptizing in the wilderness. God is up to something. And Mark just is declaring it almost as if it's, he's so excited he hasn't had time to process it. He's just blurting it out there. And I love that. I like the Gospel of Mark. Uh, it, it just is raw in some ways. It's, a, it's authentic. It's, it's unfiltered, if you will. And it's exciting. And it, it brings a, 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 an energy very different than the, the, the well-crafted words of Luke and Matthew. Um, it isn't that Mark doesn't write well. He just writes from like here. He's just, this is what I know and I want you to know it too. So I, I like Mark. But it's that in the beginning, the good news and um, that's something we can we can always hold our um, our hat hang our hat on or hold hope out for that God is always up to something and um, Mark just was there when that something was the good news of Jesus Christ so it's just exciting so join me for a moment of prayer thank you God for being with us now in in this space for giving us the word of Isaiah and Mark May your spirit open our heart and our, our lives to receive what they offer to us now. Be with us now in the speaking and hearing of your word. Amen. So what these lessons create is a mood or a setting um, uh, or a context uh, that, that, that needs comfort that needs or that, 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 that displays movement or is unsettled or uncertain. It is a context certainly we know a little bit about today and I am mindful of the fact that what the, the people in Isaiah felt you know their movement was from from exile to home they were going back um, they've been separated from God uh, some of them for 200 years um, as, as the people of Israel were leaving their homeland and being slowly deported and finally um, the fullness of that came in the late in the early 6th century pardon me and and then they're gone from their homeland but about 200 years passes that they know what it means to be separated from home and here comes this word comfort comfort they've served their time I'm bringing them home so their movement is from exile to home. In Mark, the movement is from life before and without a Messiah to life with a Messiah. And, and that movement has been around in Mark's time for 150 years or so. Um, they've been waiting for a Messiah. The energy's been building. The, 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 the hope has been there. And they're so excited. Um, and finally it is fulfilled and Mark displays and writes about that fulfillment so their movement is from no Messiah to a Messiah and into this space that is created in those years where people um, feel that separation or that anxiety or that expectation in, into that space uh, the scriptures offer God's word of hope and comfort that I'm still with you. I haven't forgotten you. This is what I will do. And, and those words of comfort bring the kind of hope we talk about as Christians um, for Advent. Because both Mark and Isaiah, that, that, they know that only God can bring what is needed 
for that leap um, out of where you are to where God wants us to be. Only God can bring that. And for us today, living in the 21st century, sometimes these you know scriptures are just ancient words for uh, a time long ago. But if you think about it, we live in a context right now where this huge movement has impacted us as people, as a global community. And it's that movement from there was no COVID-19 and coronavirus to there is COVID-19 and the coronavirus. We are um, living that same sense of movement from something that wasn't to something that is. And we're at the front end of that movement, kind of the negative time, if you will, the negative space where we didn't have it and now we do. But it has created the despair, the discomfort, the separation that we all are too familiar with. That is a space that, that, that we've talked about in our church and in our journey that it, it, we've moved into the wilderness space. It's that same wilderness that Mark refers to, um, that, that, that John inhabits and in where Jesus goes. And we're, it's the same wilderness that we've talked about where Moses takes the people, where God takes the people. It's that space where God can really work on us. And that's hard to accept when you're in it. But folks, we're in it and we know what this feels like. We also know that this is a painful reminder of how, just how fragile life in a global community on spaceship planet Earth is. We are interconnected. If we had forgotten that, the presence of this virus has reminded us and some of us are not very happy about learning that. Uh, and I mean us maybe personally in this context, but us um, locally and nationally and internationally. People are fighting it, resisting it, because it's upsetting the way of life we once knew. Well, the way we once knew it may not be the life God calls us to. And I think that that's part of the, the, the spiritual reflection we're all invited to. But back to this idea of, uh, of the space of the wilderness. We need to hear words of hope, comfort, and we've got one. And that one is the word vaccine. The advent of a vaccine is bringing hope. And it's real, folks. It's real to me. It's real to the world. Um, it, it is something that brings us relief out of this tension and discomfort that we are experiencing. Uh, relief is on the way. <clears throat> and this is a good thing. This is where our spirits are boosted and lifted. It is kind of a real true moment of experiencing Advent because something's coming that's better than what we got and it's going to make a difference. That's the core of Advent. Something's coming and it's going to make a difference and it's better than what we got. So this is a good thing, but we also have to be careful to remember that COVID is going to be around even when there's a vaccine. Uh, we cannot think that the, the, the virus is just going to go away and that it's over. We have to be careful not to equate the vaccine with a cure. Um, and we have to be careful not to let our guard down. And we have to be truly careful. Um, and prayerful to, to, to not be afraid, uh, afraid of what will come. But uh, these are things that the hope brings and, and, and the vaccine brings, but it doesn't end everything. It's a step, it's, a, it's some relief, it's a, it's a word of comfort. But as a people of faith, we also have to be careful on other levels. And this is where it's important for me we have to be careful not to equate our human ingenuity and science and the ability to develop vaccines with the power of God. Um, you know, we're pretty good at substituting ourselves for what God is doing. And um, this is a moment where we have to stand up and say, this is about our ability to create a vaccine. It's not about our ability to um, save us. We also have to be really careful not to supplant um, God's faithfulness 
with our smarts and our, 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 our aren't we so good now? Um, the, yes, God is still out there and God is still doing things, but we are not out of the wilderness. That is the bigger picture. And that wilderness is a space that is still filled with the discord and the, the troubling reality of polarization and division, with, uh, with humans still seeking power and wealth for selfish goals and desires. The wilderness is still there, and we're still in it. We have received some hope. We can um, feel a sense of comfort, but we're still in the wilderness. This is a tough thing to, to come to terms with. But um, I'll leave it there for now because we're still in it. We're still in Advent. We're still searching. Um, but I do have a couple of questions to run by you really quick, or at least observations. So should we be hopeful and thankful for a vaccine? Absolutely. I am. Um, I'm going to be first in line. As soon as they call my number, I'll, I'll be there. Um, I, I, I want this vaccine. And it, it is a, a sense of hopefulness that comes in this season of Advent, and it, it does bring some light into um, our existence as people covered in the blanket of COVID. Um, so another observation or question, does the vaccine bring us out of the wilderness? No. We have to be mindful and remember that. Again, it's a, a step. It is something we contribute to the well-being of, of, of the world, but it is not the salvation that we, the people of faith, claim. Um, we get some relief, but we have to be careful not to overextend faith into the realm of the vaccine. Um, we have a lot of work to do as the people of God to bring wholeness, well-being, to bring the life of the kingdom John says Jesus brings into the world, to bring the comfort that God says is coming to be restored and be renewed and made new. We have a lot of work to do. Because as long as people in leadership roles and people who lead nations and, um, and we as a people pursue power and wealth for ourselves, as long as we do not work for the benefit of others first, as long as not everybody has water and food to live on, as long as war persists, the wilderness is here and we're in it. And we as a people of Christian faith believe only God has the power to get us out of that. And so that third observation I would offer is, well then what is our hope? Mark offers that hope. It's in our repentance. It's in our um, willingness to accept that we are not all that. We're uh, to know that God is still the one who is faithful and God is still the one who brings healing and salvation. Overcoming ourselves is a big step. People of Christian faith who hear John say, repent, hear Jesus say, repent, have the opportunity to change the world because we can do it for ourselves and invite others to join us. So the hope is out there. We're part of it, the vaccine's part of it, but it all comes from God. And so in this second Sunday of Advent, I would invite you to, to be hopeful, to be thankful, to be committed, um, and to walk the journey through the wilderness, um, and to feel the road being built that takes us from exile to home, where valleys are lifted up and mountains are made low and the glorious highway of our Lord is there and we're on it or we're cheering God on it or we're helping others get on it. There's a lot of hope out there, but the true hope of salvation still lies in the repentant heart of all faithful people and of all people who lead. And so uh, I'm hopeful that God is continuing to work among us. So bless you and, um, and may the, the hope that comes with a vaccine find you uh, and may the hope that comes with Advent of a repentant heart fill you. Um, my prayers are for us all and for this whole community, this global community we live in. Join me for a moment of prayer. 
Thank you, O oh God, for being with us, for opening our eyes and our hearts, for giving us the gift of, uh, of intelligence and curiosity and ingenuity, for blessing us with your presence. Most of all, we thank you for Christ, who is our Lord. And it is to him that we give ourselves for your work in this world. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we have uh, another uh, piece of music, a uh, video, that is being offered. Uh, uh, here it is. And now I invite you into a time of prayer and of remembrance and uh, some good news. Uh, if you haven't already heard, Betsy and I are so happy right now and grateful. Um, our daughter Rachel has uh, given birth to the, uh, her and Nick's first child um, on Thursday. And um, we are grateful that all three of them are doing well and that uh, a new life has come into the world. So it's a great joy for us to have our grandson number four uh, among us. I'll share your name with him later when I have permission to do so. Um, I think they want to do some uh, telling of their own first, so I'll, I'll withhold that at this time. But uh, just prayers for, um, as we call him, tiny human and for their family, but also for all the birth that is going on, the, the sign of new life and the commitment to the hope that we hu humans can bring into the world. So I'm grateful for everybody who, who risks uh, bringing new life into the world because it is a testament of our hope that things will be good. So 
thank you um, for that good news. Also, just again, prayers for all those who are affected by the coronavirus, for the, 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 the stability and the instability of our, um, our human family. Um, prayers for that. So there, there's much to be thankful for, and um, let us pray. Thank you, God, for today, for the chance of a, of a new sunrise and a new life. It speaks of the hope that we all have for one another. We ask that your spirit would change all of our hearts so that we can be helpful to one another, that we can live the care that is demonstrated in Jesus, the compassion that is demonstrated in his daily life, that we could be his hands, feet, his words, and his presence for all. This is our hope. This is the hope you call us to. So hear our prayers and receive us as your people this day as we together say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's time to set that table and to break the bread. And um, I invite you to have yours ready. For the bread that we are given, we should give thanks. And for this bread that makes us whole in the life of Christ. For the table that it opens for us to feast at and us to bring others to we give thanks. And so this bread is broken knowing that God makes us whole. And the cup that is poured on this and every table that we offer is the cup of salvation, of life, and of abundance. So may God bless these and all the elements that are before us as we together break bread and partake in the meal of life. Amen. And now we close this day with uh, one of my favorite hymns, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Um, and we hand it over to Michael and to Benjamin. Set thy people free from
thine all-sufficient merit raise us to thy glorious throne. Amen and amen. And now may the God of all grace, the God of all glory, the God of all hope, bless and keep us all as we seek to be faithful, joyful, and hopeful in every moment. Life is a beautiful thing, and we are called to live it, and we are called to live it for Christ. So now may God bless you and keep you today and always. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>